Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to introduce you to a couple of the cool features and settings that you can use with the Motion Live plugin to further customize and enhance your motion capture. In this tutorial we're going to use the OptiTrack body motion capture data, but the same settings can apply to any other gear profile as well. After a couple of our engineers finish their fight to the death, we'll get started. Connecting the gear of your choice is a fairly simple process that we talk about in other tutorials more specific to each gear profile. First what you want to do is click the plus button on the body row to add the gear profile for OptiTrack. Then click the empty green circle to connect. In this case, Motion Live is receiving the raw motion capture data from a single actor in OptiTrack. In the character list section, just click on the exclamation mark and select the actor profile that you wish to control your respective models in iClone. You'll see the right pane display the body mocap settings. Let's take a look at ground vertical offset first. It can be used for all body mocap gears and devices to fix potential character floating issues or if they're sinking to the ground of your scene. This is mostly caused due to the height of the actor when doing the calibration. Note that you'll only be able to use this in preview or record modes. When I preview, you can see that both dummies are not contacting the ground floor, but we can adjust the ground vertical offset value for each dummy during preview to correct the ground contact issue. If you have floor contact enabled on your dummies and you take the ground vertical offset too low, you'll see your model's knees begin to bend. Let's talk about the position radio buttons now. Notice that I've set the two dummies on opposite ends of the stage facing each other, and the position radio button is set to iClone. What this means is that upon preview, your characters will keep the transform location in iClone and move about the scene in relation to that initial position that you place them in. We only have one fabulous mocap model moving in one direction in OptiTrack but we can have the characters mirror the movement data if we place them on opposite ends of the iClone project area. If we switch the position radio button of both characters to mocap data, what will happen is that upon preview, both our characters will snap to the relative positions they are at in the OptiTrack capture area. Because our adult dummy has longer legs, he'll cover more ground relative to his miniature companion due to retargeting to the different bone structures. Here's a good example of when you may want to retain the iClone position data. In this project, our female dummy is attached to a moving platform. In a situation like this, we obviously wouldn't want our female dummy to snap to the capture position in OptiTrack, as she would then not be on the moving platform. Here you can see our highly paid professional mocap artists performing their motions individually according to the timing and movement of the platform in the scene. Because the project is set to iClone position data, it doesn't matter where they are standing, and they can both see the view screen to help them time their respective reactions correctly. In the second example, our actors have decided that the capture area in OptiTrack will do just fine for the scene they are about to act out. This can be a useful method of capture if you have real physical props or obstacles in your real life capture area that you need to avoid or interact with. It's much easier than placing them in iClone post-capture. It's also the recommended method of capture if you have two characters interacting with each other, as in the scene. If you use iClone positions when your two characters are interacting with each other, it can make positioning and measurements a lot more difficult, whereas if you simply use the raw position data streaming from OptiTrack, you won't need to do as many adjustments and you can avoid meticulous planning for initial positions in iClone. Keep in mind that if the size of your actors is significantly different from your on-screen 3D characters, some motions may present differently or incorrectly in your 3D scene, such as the shoulder tap here. Therefore, it's good practice to try to match up your actor sizes with the actual on-screen characters for the most accurate results. Let's talk next about the dummy mask pane. This allows us to record motions for different body parts individually by selecting specific parts in the selection section. So what we have is a waving motion that has been applied to our female dummy. If we want, we can select both arms and hands of our dummy so that the incoming mocap data will not affect those specific body parts. They're currently masked out. Instead, they will retain the wave animation. We can set the vertical offset a little lower and then preview to see the results. You'll see that the waving animation will remain on the arms and hands, while the rest of the body will now follow the body mocap data streaming in from OptiTrack. Now let's take a look at the mirror feature. Actors can use the monitor as a mirror to perform their motions more accurately with this feature. If we select the mirror motion checkbox for the male dummy and preview, 
you can observe that he will move the complete opposite way to his counterpart. For these mocap actors like ours who easily get turned around, this can be a very useful feature. Next up is the hip position lock feature. If we activate that for our male dummy character, you'll notice that his hip height and position remain consistent throughout the capture. This can be a useful feature if you want to create motions like swimming or floating in space, where the center of gravity will remain consistent while your limbs flail around. It's also quite ideal for creating non-root motions such as run or walk cycles for game engines, which use different control methods to move characters around the game environment. Or you could have your character do a weird sort of in-place dance routine like you see here. To avoid floating issues like you just saw, the unlock height option will allow your character's hips to move up and down vertically, but will restrict your character's movements to the other two axes. Very useful if floating races and the like aren't your thing. That's about it for the basic settings and features of the MoCap Live plugin. Hopefully you learned a lot in this video, and we hope that you'll have a blast with your motion capture and iClone. Don't forget to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.